Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to AWS On Air. I'm your host, Shashank. And if you're just tuning in, this is your opportunity to learn more about some of the launches that are happening here today at reInvent. We have our service experts. You'll hear from them directly. Before we get started, let's do a quick round of introductions. Hello, I'm Marcia Vishalva, uh, DA for Latin, Latin America. So I'm super excited to be talking today about Amazon SageMaker serverless inference because everything Ooh. that is serverless makes me extremely excited. <laughs> so we are with some folks and, that and are. And going everything to inference know. makes me excited. So yeah, we so have, we are you in a, covered. <laughs> yes, we are super pumped here. So yeah. what are our experts? I for? know. Who, you want to oh. go first? Sure, Maybe. Shelby Eigenbrod. I'm an AIML specialist solutions architect at AWS. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Rishabh. I'm a senior product manager with Amazon SageMaker. Welcome, Shelby. Welcome, Rishabh. So uh, let's just dump right in. I know you want to see all the technical details. <laughs> so let's start with the obvious. What did we launch today? So today we launched uh, the first purpose-built serverless ML inference option on cloud. Uh, it's called Amazon SageMaker Serverless Inference. It's an easy way for customers to deploy models uh, uh, on SageMaker uh, without uh, having to manage any of the underlying infrastructure. So they just provide us the memory configuration and, and by default we assign compute resources uh, in, the, uh, in the back end and they, and they get charged only on a pay per use uh, basis. So they don't get charged for when there is any idle time. So it, it's a really exciting product and uh, excited to see how customers use it. So how uh, customers did it before this launch? So a lot of customers do it uh, in a DIY fashion. So a lot of customers today are uh, using Lambda, for example. Uh, there is Knative uh, and uh, other tools which customers use uh, to deploy on serverless. But uh, when speaking to customers, a lot of customers are also looking for a managed solution. Yeah. So what we are offering here is a more managed offering where AWS uh, basically provides uh, uh, or manages all of the underlying infrastructure from monitoring, logging, uh, security, uh, and we also integrate within the SageMaker ecosystem, right? So you get the benefit of all the Sage SageMaker specific features, um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's that's hot. Yeah, because yeah. before uh, our customers will need to launch an instance, uh, decide what capacity they need, and do all these things that I don't like doing. <laughs> so for some of our uh, viewers who are uh, probably using SageMaker or new to SageMaker. So you could host endpoints before, but you had to specify your instance type and you had to keep it running, yeah. right? And you had to manage scaling based on demand and all Got that. It. So what you're saying is with serverless inference, you don't have to do any of that. You still host an endpoint just like you do with SageMaker. So the same familiar user experience, I imagine? Exactly. So we've put in a lot of effort to ensure that the experience overall for customers, whether they are deploying on instance-based endpoints or on serverless, it's similar. So they need to follow the same steps to deploy models on uh, uh, endpoints on SageMaker. Um, and they basically provide, as I said, a memory configuration, and then we'll basically manage all of the underlying resources. Uh, the other really cool feature that we are offering is that customers can use the same container and they can deploy it on serverless endpoints and also on real-time endpoints. So that gives them an additional benefit uh, uh, if they want to move uh, between different endpoint types. Yeah, that's cool. So one of the questions I, I used to answer a lot was, if I don't have inference requests coming in, should I still continue to pay for my resources, right? So if you host an endpoint today with SageMaker real time, you have an instance running and say you don't have any requests coming in at night time, you're still paying for that or you risk you know, shutting it down and switching it back on. Yeah. So with serverless in France, you don't have to worry about that, right? So if there are no requests coming in, you're not, you're not paying for anything. So what does a customer pay for in this case? Yeah, so customers only pay for the compute time uh, which it takes to process the inference request and for data processing, which will depend on the payload size that they use. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we'll manage all of the scaling out, scaling in, and scaling down to zero of instances, uh, underlying instances, so they don't have to manage any of the infrastructure, they don't have to do load testing, identify what is the right instance type, then manage all, all of the auto-scaling policies. So all of that is managed by SageMaker. Awesome, so if a customer's already deploying their container, the inference server, to SageMaker real-time endpoints with Little code changes, you could switch to serverless 
in friends today so they right? yeah so they can use the same container same just container. create a new endpoint config and then just deploy new, on oh just the, just the new config and they can switch and they, they can switch back if they feel like hey i'm getting a more periodic inference request so they can switch back and forth so currently in preview what we are supporting is switching from serverless to real time uh -huh. so let's say today your traffic is intermittent and you you want to have like a serverless endpoint and tomorrow it becomes stable so you right. can simply update the endpoint and move from serverless to real time uh, but for preview we are not supporting real time to serverless but that's going to come soon got it okay one question what is can you give us a, a good example of a use case that a customer will benefit exactly from this new so thing? let's uh, like, let me give you an example. For example, uh, let's say if you run a chatbot service for a payroll application, which mm -hmm. processes payrolls at the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. So you get customer inquiries typically at the end of the month, and for the remaining part of the month, it's intermittent. There will be some fluctuations. Uh, during tax filing season, there is going to be huge spikes, and it's probably difficult to predict that spike. Mm. So at that point of time, it's easier to deploy on serverless because you don't have to manage any of the infrastructure, right? It's, right. It scales really fast. Uh, we'll manage all of the infrastructure. We'll manage all of the underlying compute resources. And you'll only be charged for the compute time, right? So you're not going to get charged for any of the idle time. So that that is a significant benefit that you get out of the box. Yeah, awesome. Great. So I, I guess this begs the question then, um, there are still some use cases where the real-time endpoint use case is still better. And those are if you have predictable workloads, I guess. So if you have steady stream of requests coming in, uh, you could use serverless inference, but you know your workload, so you could choose the right uh, re compute resources. Whereas if you have sporadic requests, you can't predict uh, like the use case you just mentioned, then serverless is better, right? Exactly. So, so if you know that you're going to get 100 requests every day uh, throughout the year, it's easier to just put a instance and you right. get, get like, great uh, uh, performance and latency, so then it's easier to go with real-time endpoints, but in cases where A, the traffic is intermittent, or the traffic pattern is unpredictable or very spiky, in that case, it makes more sense to go with serverless. Okay, so for, I know we want to jump into a demo, but one last question. Are there things that a user should be aware of in terms of uh, maybe uh, request latency and stuff like that, which would help them decide, should I choose a, uh, real-time inference, uh, real-time endpoint with a specific hardware versus serverless. Sure. So one thing that uh, users should be aware of is the, the cold start time, because you are with dealing with serverless. So every time there is a new request after a certain period of time, we'll need to download the model into mm. the memory, and that that will basically lead to cold start time. Ah. Uh, so if applications are not tolerant of cold start times, they should still go with real-time endpoints, which tolerant. are instance-based. But if they're tolerant, they should go with okay. serverless. So if I have to build a uh, an Alexa clone, then I, uh, I shouldn't consider this because uh, you want quick responses, mm. but if I had a different application where yeah. uh, I didn't mind that, you know. Initial uh, cold start. Initial cold start, and this is only when it's been idle. Exactly. Right? Okay, okay. Exactly. All right, so should we jump into a demo yeah, and let's take a it. look at code? I know you all want to see code, so let's see some <laughs> code. Sure, all right, so we'll start with a demo. So inside this demo, is everyone able to see it okay? All right. Uh, your other window, it's here. Oh. Need to. Yeah. There you go, folks. There we go. Awesome. So we're going to go through a quick demo of how it works. Can you make the font bigger, please? Yeah. Oh, let's do that. There it is. Is that better? Yeah. All right. That looks good. So we're going to go through a quick demo, and this is a notebook that'll be available in SageMaker examples for you to try out on your own. But inside here, we're doing some of the standard things. We'll go through the first part pretty quick because a lot of it is standard and what you've done before. But here we're pulling in Boto3, which is the AWS Python SDK. We're pulling in the SageMaker SDK. Um, we're retrieving some data. So because this is an example, all of the data, it's based on an abalone use case for a regression model. All that data is hosted in an S3 bucket and we're just pulling that data here. We're uploading that data to S3, which is where SageMaker training is gonna expect that to be. So in this step, we're doing training. Nothing changes about this part at all, just training as you would today. In this case, we are using a built-in container or a SageMaker managed container. So it is XGBoost, setting up our estimator, setting up our hyperparameters, 
and then training the model. So all of this is just as you would do today. So Shelby, yep. for some of our viewers who probably not use SageMaker, right? So whatever you showed now is stuff that exists today, right? Yep. You, you uh, specify your training script and you write up your estimator function where you specify what kind of instance you want to run, train this on, how many instances you want, and then call the fit function, and then SageMaker will go get the data set from S3, download it, yep. finish training, and get the model back into S3. So this is all stuff that exists, exactly. and now the magic now uh, the happens, magic happens yep. where we jump into <laughs> serverless inference. Okay. Exactly. So in this next step is where you're actually taking that model that's been trained and you're deploying it. So in this case, we are essentially packaging the model for deployment. Okay. So SageMaker has the concept of a model. And with that, you're basically packaging it. You're using the model artifacts okay. that were created during training. You're specifying the image URI. I think we can't see the screen on uh, oh. screen share. OK. It's on? All right. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> OK. There it is. Um, so we're specifying the image URI. A key thing to note here is we are using a built-in managed SageMaker container for this, but serverless inference also supports bring your own container, which okay. is a lot of times important to customers. Um, so we're basically packaging that model artifact. Oh. Sorry, lost yeah. my screen. And another interesting thing is if you train your model uh, somewhere else, you yep. can still just bring in your container Yep. Bring in a model and just use server. If, if inference hosting is all you cared about, then exactly. you just start from there, right? Just yep. bring in your own model. And, okay. Exactly. We call that scenario bring your own model. Yeah. If you're basically training elsewhere and then you're bringing to host on SageMaker. So here is where the difference happens. So if you're familiar with creating endpoints today, there is a API for creating the endpoint config. And that's where you're specifying how you want that endpoint to be configured. There is a new section in there now called serverless config. And within this, you're specifying that you want this new endpoint to be created as a serverless inference endpoint. And within that, you have to identify the max concurrency, which is essentially the max concurrent invocations for any single endpoint, mm -hmm. as well as the memory size. And both of those are configurable. One question, is the memory like in the Lambda functions that when you increase the memory, you also get more CPU? Yes. Okay, so, so memory is also more power. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you need it faster, it's a proxy for improving compute yeah. 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 capability. Yeah. Okay. So if exactly. you need a faster response, then put more memory, yep. even though we, you don't need more memory, but you yep. might want to get yep. faster response. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And this one is really just configuring the endpoint, and then you can see the endpoint, which is creating the endpoint. You'll notice nothing changes here. Everything changes in the create endpoint config, where you're specifying your serverless config parameters. Well, and then you just create your endpoint. Another uh, quick clarification. So the code you highlighted where you talk about the memory. Yep. Uh, so previously, for a real-time endpoint, this is where you specify the compute instance Exactly. Type. So you're just switching that out with these memory configurations, and that's it. Right? Yep, exactly. Okay. So instead of specifying the instance type, size, and number of instances you want yeah. to use, instead you're specifying this. That's. Simple enough Very to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get started right away then, yeah. And then you can create the endpoint. And the create the endpoint is basically doing the same thing it's going to do for persistent endpoints, but in this case, it's generating a serverless endpoint. Awesome. One question. What kind of metrics can the customer see when they are using serverless? Is it the same uh, metrics that they have before, or there are new, new metrics? on CloudWatch? So I think uh, uh, mo mostly the metrics are same. Uh, the one thing that we've added, added is model setup time, which is essentially the amount of time it takes to download the model and set it up um, on the endpoint. Uh, and they can, like we, similar to other inference options, we are essentially emitting all the logs and metrics to CloudWatch, uh, so they can yeah. create alarms and uh, reporting from there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If there is some throttling, for example, if you configuring wrong the amount of concurrency, can you see that in, in the CloudWatch metric? Correct. Yeah. You, you, Awesome. Perfect, and then you go create the endpoint, and then you would just hit the endpoint like you would any endpoint today using the evoke endpoint runtime client. I'm just going to hit that endpoint. Oh, While the kernel may be restarting. If someone had a notebook that did all of this with the real point endpoint hosting, then all they have to do is change those two lines yep. of code in the endpoint configuration 
to just switch the whole thing to serverless inference from real time. Yep. I think that's pretty powerful. It uh, is very. It's, it's yeah, complex. I think that that's the main like advantage here, the portability and the flexibility that you get with the different SageMaker inference options. Yeah. Uh, and the experience is exactly same, right? So we have put in enough effort to make sure that right. like the steps are exactly same. It's very simple to and it's a fully managed service as well. Yeah, one of the things I, I love about SageMaker is how you can just switch the instance type and deploy to different instances and now you can also switch, instead of instance type, you switch to serverless and then you, uh, so it's easy to probably test all these options, right? You can just, uh, or you can have both deployments. So this capability is part of SageMaker, which means it still integrates with the rest of SageMaker uh, in the console and the experience with SageMaker, right? Yeah, so. Shall we do yeah, so if you go into the console, you can, we showed you programmatically how we we're creating an endpoint uh -huh. before. You can do the exact same thing like you mentioned inside the console. Awesome. So you just take create endpoint, and then you'll notice there's, oops, sorry. I'm going to create endpoint configuration. And then you'll notice there's a new option here oh, on the type cool. of endpoint. Okay. Is that is available for all customers or they need to ask for the preview? So it is available for all customers, but we are doing the preview only in six regions. Um, okay. So so if you have like, like availability in those regions, they can still use it. Good. So if they're using the set, those six regions, they will see that when they are configuring exactly. the endpoint. Good. Awesome. Okay. Uh, I, I, I like that you can do this through the uh, Notebook, but also if you want to do this in the console. And this is the same experience you had with real time. Um, and I like that it's close to the experience a user is already familiar with, with very little changes in the workflow, yeah. right? And now I imagine this integrates well with pipelines and all the other capabilities that's in SageMaker as well. So, right? uh, so there are, like, st since it's in preview, it's in there preview. are some features which we currently support for real time endpoints, which are not going to be supported for serverless but we are working hard to make sure that uh, we have feature parity yeah. going forward. So I think the, we should highlight that. So this is in preview currently. Uh, so we want you to use it and try it and tell us tell us how you're finding it, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, any, any, any other uh, features or um, capabilities that you want to talk about before we wrap up? I think the uh, one thing I, I would call out is like um, customers can use any of the SageMaker provided 1P algorithms or uh, optimized ML frameworks or they can bring bring their own models as well, like uh, similar to real-time endpoints. So we give that flexibility as well. Like um, So being a SageMaker specific feature, as I said earlier, it's they get all the benefits of the SageMaker ecosystem. I think that was an important call out. So SageMaker obviously supports built-in algorithms and bring your own containers to and framework containers that are offered by SageMaker. So uh, you can choose to bring in any of these, uh, you know, first party algorithms or your own container. Uh, cool. So uh, yeah, thanks for the demo. That was, uh, it was a cool walkthrough. I, our, our audience always likes to see cold demos. And um, so there you have it, folks. That but was, wait, uh, where people can learn more about this? Uh, on, on, on the console page. <laughs> Just go directly to the console page? Yeah, do, do, are there blog posts or videos or anything else customers can view? So we we are working on a blog post which should be uh, published soon, but uh, we have a detailed documentation page. So if you go to the SageMaker documentation right. page, um, along with the other inference options, you can also see the serverless inference, and it's pretty detailed. It has a sample notebook that Shelby just showed, so you can use that to get started. And we also are offering a free tier, so that's a great opportunity to test it out. <laughs> awesome. So uh, now yeah. we're ready. This, <laughs> this, this this notebook that you demoed will be in the in SageMaker the, examples. SageMaker yep. examples documentation, and stay tuned for more content that'll be coming out. So yeah, so. Now we're ready to wrap up. Now we are so ready to wrap up. There you go, folks. That was <laughs> SageMaker uh, serverless inference. And uh, thank you, Rishabh thank and you Shelby, for taking time to walk us through this. So as we wrap up, uh, stay tuned. We have more live streams coming up. So hang around, and you'll see more deep dives of more services. So see you.